Welcome to the 2018 Girls Lacrosse Intermediate Umpire Training. Produced by Slider Lax. This instruction is to be used with the Girls Lacrosse Intermediate Umpire Manual, also produced by Slider Lax. The manual, the PowerPoint, and the video follows the U.S. Lacrosse rating form for levels 1 and 2. The rating form has four pages. This particular video covers part 2, that is sessions 3, 4, and 5 in the manual. Session 3 is Positioning and Field Coverage by the Umpires. The umpire needs to learn to work a game as part of a two-person crew. The umpire will need to understand positioning and field coverage with a partner in a two-person crew. Generally, the umpires in a two-person crew divide their areas of responsibilities on the field in this manner. Umpires need to have correct positioning to cover their sideline boundary. The umpire shall have correct positioning according to the play. Umpires shall stay open to the play. Umpires must be moving, but moving with a purpose. The lead umpire in a two-person crew. An umpire is the lead when the ball is moving toward the goal on his or her right. The lead umpire is on ball. The lead has overall responsibility for the critical scoring area around his or her goal. That is the goal on his or her right. The lead umpire stays ahead and outside of play at and around the ball. The lead umpire uses quadrant positioning when the ball is in or around the CSA, the critical scoring area. The lead locates in the quadrant adjacent to the ball. For example, if the ball is in quadrant 2, the lead umpire is in quadrant 1. If the ball is in quadrant 3, the lead umpire is in quadrant 2. The lead umpire shall also use tangent positioning in and around the CSA. In tangent positioning, the lead umpire positions himself or herself in order to see between the attacking player with the ball and the player defending her. In a two-person crew, the trail umpire trails the play. The trail umpire has responsibilities that complement, supplement, and balance the lead umpire. With the ball in the CSA, the trail umpire should be moving on an arc that is shown in this image uh, by the red marking. The trail umpire is off ball. Off ball includes play that is inside the CSA and at the restraining line. Body language and movement will communicate that the trail umpire is focused on off-ball play. The trail umpire must maintain an appropriate relative position to play. As wide as the widest and as deep as the deepest is a good guideline for the trail umpire.
A woman's lacrosse umpire must have an appropriate level of physical fitness in order to officiate a game. And often, assignments are multiple games. An umpire must have endurance, speed, and agility. A high school JV and varsity doubleheader is roughly 100 minutes, that is 15 minutes per mile, which is more than 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles, of running. Here is a good resource for uh, fitness for any sports official. Session 4, Mechanics, Penalty Administration, and Game Management. Mechanics for the draw. In a two-person crew, the lead umpire, where the goal has been scored, retrieves the ball from the goalkeeper. The former trail umpire will administer the draw. At the start of the game and at the start of a half, the tableside umpire will administer the draw. If the umpires are switching, every two or three goals or every five, ten minutes, then the former lead umpire keeps the ball and moves to execute the draw. A brief conversation between umpires may take place at this time when they cross around midfield. The umpire who is administering the draw brings the centers together the umpire places the ball in the widest part of both crossheads and approximately above the center mark on the field. Both players will have one foot towing the center line. The crosses of both centers must be parallel to the ground and in the plane of the center line. Once the draw is set, the umpire says ready and backs out the center line toward the sideline opposite the trail umpire with arm raised above the head and whistle ready. Both centers at the command ready must remain stationary except for their heads. The umpire blows the whistle and then lowers the arm in the start play signal. At the whistles, both centers may move. The first motion of the cross must be straight up. The umpire must be in position to view this motion. The ball must go above the heads of both centers. Up until the point of the whistle on the draw, the off umpire, the umpire not administering the draw, has responsibility for both restraining lines and the umpire administering the draw has responsibility for all activity in and around the circle. At the whistle or just after in a two-person crew both umpires have responsibility for the restraining line on their right. Then the trail umpire is off ball. The draw and the center circle are always the responsibility of the lead umpire. Both umpires should be aware of activity at their restraining lines and around the ball. Usually the umpire closest to the ball will signal possession. The umpire's voice includes the whistle. The umpire talks with the whistle. Another communication tool for the umpire is proper signaling. Signals communicate to everyone at the game, especially the partner and the coaches. Boundary violations. The ball is not out until it hits the ground on the line or outside the line, or is touched by a player standing out of bounds. 
Remember, the line is out. In the penalty administration for a boundary violation, the player who is receiving the ball and will restart play with the ball is given the ball two meters inside from the boundary line. Other players are brought onto the field in their relative positions to the ball. Other players must only give the player with the ball one meter of space. Something to help you with penalty administration are cheater cards that I have developed and you may get these through sliderlax.com. Uh, it is important to note that these cards should not be used during play but are simply references to check administration of penalties during halftime or after the game or before the game if a discussion is being held. These cards are produced every year by Slider Lax. In penalty administration, Casper the friendly ghost, the friendliest ghost you know. Ball, offender, and others. Place the ball then place the offender, and then place all others for the penalty administration. At the intermediate level, there are several steps that the umpire should be aware of and should use. Blow the whistle, the player should stand. Give the direction signal. Give the foul or the violation signal. Position the players using BOO, boo, Allow your partner to reposition, make eye contact with your partner, and then blow the whistle to restart play. A special consideration for penalty administration is four meters. The proper administration of the four meters is a safety consideration. Players are placed as a part of penalty administration four meters behind the ball, four meters away from the ball, or between the ball and the goal four meters away. Four meters, uh, if there are players who do not understand the metric system, is four yards, one foot, and 1.48 inches, approximately. Most penalties are administered at the point of the foul, but not all penalties. No penalty is administered closer than eight meters from the goal. Penalties that are not administered at the point of the foul include three seconds, major fouls inside the eight meter arc, minor fouls by the defender inside the CSA above the GLE goal line extended, fouls in the CSA below the GLE, major fouls outside the 8 meter arc inside the CSA above the GLE, restraining line violations, goal circle violations, draw violations, and offsetting fouls involving any of the above situations. The restraining line is a special consideration. It is the responsibility of the trail umpire. When the trail umpire is counting players for offsides calls, it is best and encouraged to count forward. When the ball is in the CSA above the GLE, offsides is administered at the top of the 12 meter fan. Cards are an important part of penalty administration. The green card is used for the first team delay of game only. It is not a warning card and should not be used as such. The green yellow cards are used as the second team delay of game only. This is the only time two cards are used at the same time. 
According to the rules book, the yellow card is the warning card. It is the two minute penalty. It is used for subsequent team delay of game carding. It is also used for major foul penalties. Some yellow cards are required cards. The second yellow card on a specific player results in the suspension of that player for the remainder of the game. The fourth yellow card on a team requires the team to play down one player for the remainder of the game. The red card is an expulsion for the remainder of the game and the player will need to sit out the next game. Session 5 is Comportment, Communication, and Teamwork. An umpire shall show respect for all persons involved in the game. An umpire shall use a controlled voice and body language and have a calm, confident, composed, and respectful attitude. The umpire has responsibility for protecting all persons involved in the game. Anything an umpire thinks is misconduct is misconduct. Spectators must not be allowed to become abusive to the players or umpires, nor must they be allowed to become unruly or interfere with the orderly progress of the game. Direct contact between the umpire and an abusive spectator is not advised. In these situations, host management and security should be used. The umpire's jurisdiction ends only when he or she has left the venue, not at the last whistle. Always at the end of a game, get feedback from your partner. Your best critic and your best coach, so to speak, will be your partner. Thank you for watching and 